Good evening, folks. This is Bill Breeden. Thank you for joining me tonight for our final constellation tour, number 88. Tonight we're going to go over Octans, the Octant, which is located at the South Celestial Pole on the sky. Um, Octans being um, at the South Celestial Pole is circumpolar which means it's visible all year from locations below the equator. So we're observing tonight from Buenos Aires. We have Stellarium set up for September the 15th, 2022, at about 8.20 p.m. from a moderately light polluted location, showing us a 60 degree true field of view, which is what you get about when you look up with the unaided eye. So Octans is faint and obscure, but it's very significant because of where it is on the sky. It's at the point in the southern sky around which the entire sky turns, uh, much like the Little Dipper um, for us northern hemisphere observers. Octans is right at the South Celestial Pole. So the rest of the southern sky does turn around that location. Now, for us northerners, the Little Dipper marks the northern, uh, the point of the North Star in the sky, and the rest of the constellations rotate around it counterclockwise. In the southern sky, it's just the opposite. Octans is the point in the sky at the southern pole, and all the constellations rotate clockwise around it. So let's go over how to find Octans. All we got to do is find the point, um, find the south celestial pole in the sky, and we do that using the Southern Cross. So let's look south and look for the Southern Cross, which stands out. It's right here and Alpha and Beta Centauri, which are here. Thank goodness for those stars, because without them, the southern sky would be pretty difficult to navigate. Uh, but these serve as wonderful signposts. So let's follow these two stars here in crux, the pointer stars, and let's draw an imaginary perpendicular line through Alpha and Beta Centauri in the same direction. And where those two lines intersect, we will find octans, the octant. Let's look up a little bit. And you can see here's crux, and here are the pointer stars. And here's Alpha and Beta Centauri, and here's their pointer stars. So they meet at this location here. And that is exactly where you'll find, actually the point would be about right here, around which the whole sky turns. Okay, Octans does contain what we would call the South Star, which would be the Southern Sky's equivalent to Polaris, the North Star. Uh, the South Star is Sigma Octantis, which is the closest star to the South Celestial Pole. So let's start by finding Sigma. And you can see it is a it is a pretty standard star. There's nothing special about it except of where it is. It's at the southern celestial pole. Do 
it this way. Let's use the Greek symbol. And it takes us to the same place, but it does give us more information here. Um, sigma octantus, magnitude 5.45, circumpolar, distance 294 light years from Earth, with a uh, right ascension of 21 hours and 8 minutes and a declination of minus 88 degrees, 57 minutes. So it's at nearly uh, 89 degrees in southern declination. So it's just over one degree from the actual south celestial pole. And here's a view of Cygnus through the uh, 24 millimeter panoptic eyepiece. I noticed they have its name in here as Polaris Australis. That's a great name. I never knew that. Polaris Australis. I actually like that name better. So it's Sigma Octantis or Polaris, Polaris Australis, whichever you prefer. So let's have a look at the mythical figures. And you'll see octants here is depicted as an octant, which is a navigational tool that was later replaced by the sextant. And actually, uh, sec, sec, the sextant is represented in the sky as well um, in the constellation Sextants. So octants is sort of the older style navigation tool. But it was used for the same thing to measure um, angular distances in the sky. Okay, um, let's venture to a dark sky site and see what else we can observe within octans. Let's go about finding it again first. Um, let's see, we're looking south and we have the Southern Cross here and Alpha and Beta Centauri here. So we follow the pointer stars of the cross, and we follow a perpendicular line through Alpha and Beta Centauri in the same direction until the two lines would intersect, which is about here. And that puts us in the region of octans. So let's turn off the lines for a minute. Let's see, let's follow our pointer stars more accurately and where they would intersect with a perpendicular line here. Actually, it's pretty accurate. It's taken me right here to where you can see the uh, very middle of the southern sky would be. So there is, a, there is a double star in octans. It's Lambda Octantis. So let's use our trusty go-to. And it's listed here in Stellarium as a double star of magnitude 7, located 435 light years from Earth. And here's a view through the finder. Really nice uh, sprinkling of stars here in this part of the sky. Let's see if we can split it. And it takes some real zooming in, but it can be split. Uh, it looks like a blue and gold double with a separation of just three arc seconds. So if you want to split, uh, if you want to split Lambda Octantis, um, you would need to use your highest power eyepiece. Uh, somewhere in the order of a six millimeter would probably work.
Okay, let's, I don't have anything else on my list for octans, so let's use Stellarium as a star chart. Let's turn on our star labels and our deep sky object labels. Let's get a little bit more detail here. And let's turn on our boundaries. And, well, how do you like that? Nothing populated in octans. Let's, let's go a little higher here on the detail. There we go. Okay. So we've got a few objects here now we can look for. Uh, any requests? How about NGC 6438? It looks like it's pretty close to the South Celestial Pole. This is an interacting galaxy of 11th magnitude. Located 100 million light years from Earth. And here's a view of the area through the finder scope. And a simulated view through a 24 millimeter pan optic. Uh, looks like we only have an icon. We don't have an actual image in the software. So let's try another one. Let's go for this one here, NGC 7095. This is a 12th magnitude galaxy located 33 million light years away. And there's no image of it in the software. We just have an icon. Okay, let's go back to planetarium mode. And we are now looking due south again. And I have no other objects on my list, so I'm just going to enjoy a view of the southern sky here. And I'm going to run time a little faster so that you can start to see the rotation of the sky. You can just make out how it's turning. You can see Crux here moving downward. Um, the circumpolar constellations are going in a clockwise direction around octons. So as this is the 88th and final constellation tour, um, I want to give um, Give a shout out to the folks that created Stellarium. I owe you a big thank you. This software has helped me keep my astronomy observing going during a uh, pandemic and um, during some other uh, family challenges I have going on right now. I don't have a chance to observe much these days. So thank you to the folks that created Stellarium. Um, I want to thank uh, the members of the Riverbend Astronomy Club, the members of the St. Louis Astronomical Society, and the Astronomical League for the, the roles that they play in my life um, and my astronomy hobby. Um, thank you for being there. I want to thank all the viewers that have stuck with me here through these Constellation Tours. I really hope you've enjoyed them. And I hope you found them helpful. Uh, this is pretty much the way I stargaze. I don't really do any hard science. It's just a um, sort of a Zen moment. It gives me a Zen moment to go out and uh, 
and look at the heavens and observe. Uh, I get to meet some really great people. I've made a lot of friends in this hobby. And this pretty much is the way I, I practice actual observing. I just bring a list of objects I'm interested in and I tend to concentrate on one or two constellations during a particular evening. So this is pretty much the way I do it. Um, I want to thank YouTube Premieres uh, for giving me a platform to share my constellation tours with you. Uh, it's been wonderful. It's um, a great tool. Um, again, this is Bill Breeden, a member of Riverbend Astronomy Club, member of the St. Louis Astronomical Society, and member of the Astronomical League. Um, all 88 of these constellation tours were created during the year 2020 and the year 2021. So this concludes my tour of Octons tonight. And it also concludes um, all 88 constellation tours. Good night, good seeing, and enjoy this wonderful hobby of astronomy. Good night, everyone.